Hello, Sean. Hello. Hi, Ben. It's um, it's really good to to have this conversation with you and to explore, um, you know, a subject which helps us to uh, to walk well. And uh, I hope we can really get to some gems and some wisdom that will really help people uh, in this time uh, to walk as well as they can. Yeah. So today we're going to explore, uh, you know, the typical famous scripture in Romans 7, where Paul writes, you know, why do I do the things that I don't want to do? And why don't I do the things that I so want to do? And uh, I think we can all relate to that. But just before we get into that subject, um, so I understand, Sean, that you are some sort of a, a life coach. Is that right? Yeah, uh, I'm a life coach, uh, leadership coach. Um, I'm fascinated by personality and uh, yeah, I'm uh, an author as well. So, but I guess what I do, there's quite a lot there. I guess what I do is I try and, my thing is about finding and releasing people's potential, right. find out what God has put deep in people, whether they know it, it's there or not, and right. bringing it surface and teaching leaders to be able to, 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 to do the same, whether it's within the church context or a business context. Yeah. So I guess you've got lots of tools available to you. Uh, uh, well, you maybe think? not you personally, but what by all think? the saints gone before you. All the life coaches gone before you that you obviously utilize. Oh, I've people. learned a lot. Yeah, I've had to yeah. learn a lot over the years. Yeah. So, so this is obviously a, a very broad and wide and deep subject. Yeah. And uh, uh, on what you know, what some of our motivations deeper on the mo motivations are behind some of the things we do. Um, so let's approach it fr from the outside in, kind of thing. And so, so what do you think uh, that why why we do some of the things that we don't want to do and why don't we do some of the things that we do want to do what do you think is, is some of the background behind that uh oh gosh there's, there's all sorts of things um i think uh, uh i know we talked a little bit beforehand about this but um i think to self-regulate to sort of regulate our emotions our level of of sort of a, a, a arousal uh, or stimulation uh, we can be overstimulated or understimulated so um, we try and regulate back into a particular window of, of tolerance um, uh, that's a that's a major thing um, and um, when we're outside of our window of tolerance um, you know, we can be really overstimulated, anxious and jittery and stressed and angry. Um, and we fight and we argue. Um, and we actually use all sorts of things to try and bring us down. So, you know, alcohol, sex, pornography, cannabis, chocolates. That's chocolate's mine. Chocolate and crisps is my late at night bring me down from overthinking um, uh, and, and, and watching TV, um, you know, watching a Netflix box set or something like that. That's right. kind of what I do when I'm sort of overly, um, sort of overly stimulated. Um, a glass of wine um, as well, um, you know, and some of that's not, you know, some of that's not great. Uh, um, so I'm really what I should be doing instead, which I try and do is one, cut out the wine, cut out the crisps. Uh, I, I struggle uh, with the wine and the crisps. I do like a glass of wine. Uh, and really I should be doing something like meditation and breathing and prayer and, and, and exercise. So I do have a good, I do have a good meditation and, and uh, uh, exercise regime but every now and again it gets tripped up so, so so to kind of paraphrase what you're what you're saying is that we've got a like a, a normal operating way of being yeah or, or operating where we're making 
you know, decisions that go, go well for us, you know, our reactions to our surroundings, our problem solving skills, you know, within our temperament, everything is fine. And then we can suddenly find ourselves uh, either making decisions or responding that is almost like outside our, our optimum or our choice way, maybe yeah. fundamentally of being. Yeah. Um, and I guess what you're saying, there are, there are many variables, many determining factors that can alter our happy equilibrium. So yes. what do you what so what do you think some of these variables might be, Sean? Uh, I think you know stress. Um, mm. Something happens that reminds you. It's often something quite subconscious. Something that reminds us of a previous trauma. Yeah. It, 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 it's trauma that puts us outside of of our window of tolerance, or reminder of a previous trauma. So, so just to stop you there. What you're saying there is that a variable or something deep inside of us that we're totally unaware of, something maybe from, like you're saying, from a past experience or something that even goes further back to childhood can influence our general operating. Yeah. So a friend of mine a couple of years ago, he doesn't really like getting into other people's cars. Right. Uh, he had a really bad it's a really serious road accident. You know, he spent months in hospital. So he's really jittery sitting in the fr in the, at the front passenger seat, mm. you know, and, and will point out hazards and pedestrians and stuff. So he's, so he's kind of a, a backseat driver, as it were, um, yeah. because being the passenger reminds him of not being in control. Yeah. Uh, tries to control. Yeah. Uh, you know me at the wheel so um uh so yeah that, that would be an example of a previous trauma or it could be something back in childhood or, or 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 whatever it could be one of dozens of different things so so possibly how it appears to me is that fundamentally we want to stay safe we want to stay we safe. want to stay safe we want to survive something comes across our path that then somehow, can I use the word threaten? Yeah, threaten. It threatens our, our, our deeper sense of feeling safe, secure, in control, in charge, yeah. um, determining our future or our present. And then we adopt, we adopt something. We, we, we adopt a response. We adopt an old habit, an old mm -hmm. primitive habit. Yeah. Uh, often. So actually we can we can either be what's called it's hyper aroused, over overly aroused, or um and, and when we're threatened and overly aroused, you know, we want to run or fight. Yeah. Um so, so just to pause you there, because you, you talked earlier about explaining some, you mentioned some of these habits. I heard chocolate, I heard wine, I was comfortable with all those because they're kind of socially acceptable. But then you also mentioned some uncomfortable responses or habits um, that we don't like to maybe admit or talk about. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you mentioned pornography or, or some other outlets like that, which socially can be quite destructive. Mm. So we adopt habits do you think we are aware of these habits? Um, I think a lot of them are, are fairly become automated responses, you know? So actually, um, uh, I was thinking, I need a bit of a pick me up before mm. I talk to Ben. Yeah. So I went and made myself a cup of coffee. Yeah. Uh, my hand crept crept into the uh, sweetie jar yeah you know a bit of sugar to to to, to bring myself up yeah you know, cuz i was a sort of you know a, a kind of a low sense of, of arousal yeah uh, and that was kind of uh, i sort of thought afterwards just as i switched you on 
uh, I was thinking, oh, <laughs> I've just tried to regulate myself within my wind of at Torrance with a cup of yeah. coffee. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, and yes, pornography, sex, um, uh, all sorts of things, um, you know, computer games. You know, man, we can so lose ourselves in computer games for hours and hours and hours and hours. Do you think the, do you do you think these habits are partly determined by somebody's temperament, somebody's persona, their their personality, etc.? Um, good question. Um, not really thought so much about that uh i I suspect there are there are um i know some personalities are more prone to sort of um uh violent behavior um um, but uh i i I guess yeah i I suppose that would i need to think about that more uh, more than I assume it's it's probably vastly complex and partly dictated by by what was role played to you what you witnessed I think I think it's probably got more to do with trauma and trauma you know potentially in our early years to, to teenage years so mm. so when sort of teenagers feel quite th- threatened they can mm. sort of run or fight yeah. but actually you're a very young child and you're very threatened you can go into um, hypo arousal so it's you freeze you said you know you freeze in the face of of power and, and yeah. overwhelm uh, or yeah. you submit to power um, um so that's another trauma r- response and it, that it, it might be really helpful if i um share the, the this this model that you've proposed share the diet that would be really good yeah. so we can just talk over the top of that sean yeah um, yeah just to, to help people understand what we're talking about yeah um, so so explain this to us um sean okay so we can see there in the middle of the the the, the, the picture is our window of tolerance and along the uh left hand side is the kind of the level of arousal, the level of stimulation that we're at. So, and kind of uh, up outside of our window of tolerance where it starts to get uncomfortable, um, we get overly stimulated and anxious. Okay, just just pause there. So so the middle section, the white section, is just when you're going along your day happily, calm, nothing nothing is overly, intruding concerning threatening you feel at a happy equilibrium you're just going about your business yeah we can deal with the problems we're problem solving we're communicative we're peaceful happy um you know nothing is nothing is particularly a problem i really like i really like that word um you've got in there uh, flexible Yes. What, can, why don't you unpack that a little bit, Sean? Um, I think, yes, when we're calm in our window of tolerance, our frontal cortex, the, the, the intelligent part of our brain, mm-hmm. uh, is fully online and it's in problem-solving mode. And when it's in problem-solving mode, we can be flexible. We can adapt our behavior to the situation um you know and 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 we can yeah we can be creative Mm -hmm. with solutions however when we something happens that kicks us outside of the window of tolerance then more primitive automated part of our brains like our our amygdala you know which kind of our alarms it's like our smoke alarm in our brain that kicks in and we we resort back to sort of more primitive, uh, unthinking behaviors, um, habitual behaviors, mm-hmm. you know, um, opening the, a glass of wine, um, um, 
you know, doing, so, you know, sticking a needle in our arm. Yeah. Uh, or just one of many, you know, d difficult or antisocial things. Yeah. So, so just to pick on that, the flexible uh, concept again, um, I guess it's, it's a bit like, you know, you're going about your business, everything's fine. And then suddenly, for this is purely an example, okay? This is not a personal anecdote. Um, you want some family members want to come around, right? They want to come around for the weekend and um, they want to stay the night, right? And you, that kind of message comes your way. Or maybe your, your wife or your husband's family wants to come around and you suddenly find you're you don't want that to happen and you seem really inflexible. You seem um, really reactive to the idea of them coming over to stay. Oh yes, been there many times. <laughs> so, so I guess what, we're, what this diagram does so well, I guess it highlights that possibly underneath that flexibility or inflexibility, lies something else yeah i mean with family i mean family can be very triggering i know my own uh, uh northern irish family are very triggering and uh you know I, I i you know certainly around some of them i can swing between this red zone and this this blue zone um uh you know because historically you know a lot of things have gone wrong um mm. Mm. Yeah, because I can imagine, you know, this 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 sits nicely with what's currently possibly happening for a lot of us is that we're 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 facing in the weeks to come or months to come. You know, we're going to become more social beings again in in the old sense that we can invite people around or go to people's houses. And I guess if you are in a partnership you might find that you both respond to that quite differently. Um, as in, maybe one of you is so keen to move heaven and earth to socialize, and you might not be so comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah, I know some, I know many people who've been really comfortable yeah. with not seeing certain people, and yeah. now, that the opportunity to see certain people uh, as, as it, is on the horizon. Um, yeah, they're more jittery about it. Yeah, yeah. So what about um, trying to give another example that would be helpful? Um, what about um, when somebody gets um, uncomfortable news uh, about um, something that's happened to somebody that they know. Um, again, you're going to see very different reactions um, to that to that news, to that information. Uh, yeah, you're going to get different. You know, they they could go into hypo arousal, or they could go into the hyper arousal. You know, they could. Um, it, it depends on their their history of individual history of, of big T trauma or small T trauma, you know. Um, yeah, it depends from person to person. It's quite individual yeah. from, my understanding, from my understanding. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've experienced myself that um, when, when you get a, a situation or a bit of information or news, whatever, Initially, you shut down. Well, I do anyway. I shut down from the emotional value of that bit of information or that situation. And I find I have to sit with that for a while and allow it maybe to go from my head to my heart. So I guess one of my go-to places when, uh, when news comes my way that I don't want to hear or that's uncomfortable I, I freeze it, I shut it down, I numb it out. So you go into the blue zone? Yes, I would typically go uh, in the blue zone. I, I, I had, uh, my background 
uh, was in nursing and I used to work in an A&E department. And as you can imagine, we used to have, you know, situations that were quite, um, you know, volatile, life-saving moments where you're dealing with it within a team where you're all having to work together to save somebody's life. And lots of people reacted very differently uh, to that scenario. And I typically slowed down. Uh, I became um, possibly my emotions were disconnected with, with what I was delivering. And then the, I witnessed other people within my team who would get so hyper aroused. You know, they, they would be shaking and stressed. They couldn't communicate properly. You know, they, they probably weren't breathing properly. And, but the, the thing that I, I would say is that equal reactions to that situation was costly in different ways. Um, there was a cost whether you're hyper aroused or hypo aroused. Um, it's just the opposites of the spectrum in the reaction in the situation. Yeah, and I guess, I suppose that in your A&E department, um, the, the, you know, this must cause arguments as well, because some people are, are underactive and other people are overactive. And um, is that what, you, is that what you, you were, you're saying? You know, in terms yeah. Of yeah, and, and you'd witness all sorts of different uh, reactions. You know, I've, some people became very unpleasant to be with when they were, for example, hyper aroused. Oh yeah. Now, you know, they'd become like bulldozers. Um, you know, they were, became very, very controlling and difficult to work with. There was no compromise. They were inflexible. They were not peaceful, you know, and you, you could possibly even say they were not good problem solvers because they, the, the repertoire of skills that, that was in them was not available to them because they were so linear in their reaction. Absolutely, and, and actually some, you know, these people can be really awkward and difficult mm. and we can judge them because mm. they're being stupid. You know, why would, you, why would they behave that way? But I, yeah, their, their, their frontal cortex, the, the, the thinking part of their brain is offline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess I've seen that. And you see the other side of it, of the uh, really anxious mother sitting sort of curled up in a corner uh, in tears, you know, waiting for, for news, you know, almost frozen, yeah. waiting for news of, of what's happening to her child. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, are, there are people who become totally inactive, don't they? They, they procrastinate or they can't make a decision or they, they don't see the problem at hand. They're, they just go on mute, in, in, obviously in extreme cases, um, and just as debilitating. I'm like that. Um, yeah. I, I often end up in hypo uh, yeah. arousal. So that's mm. probably why I had my cup of coffee and a bit yeah. of chocolate. Obviously I'm not in extreme hypo arousal you know in the blue zone yeah uh, but uh what sort of yeah what sort of feelings do you because you, you talked about going there i i get my muscles go in my uh shoulders and neck can go quite tense right um and yeah i i, I struggle to i can struggle to speak uh i was in a situation couple of weeks ago where I just felt quite threatened by some teenagers. Right. Uh, they had us a bit cornered and um, I just felt, um, I felt like I was sort of hunching over and I was going to start looking down at the ground, mm. but, which was quite dangerous because I kind of needed to, to stand there, you know, strong, safe and secure, well grounded and, and hold my, you know, just hold the peace. Yeah. Um, uh, I needed to be assertive. Um, so uh, it wasn't a nice situation. Um, uh, so yeah, what, ha what happens in you when when you go into that? You, you talk about needing uh, not being able to think 
particularly fast and needing time away, you know, time out, is, is that it? Yeah, well, I think, you know, I'm, I'm nearly middle-aged now, Sean. I'm nearly 50. So nearly? I've had, I, I'm, I'm, well, 50 next week. Wow. Um, and I guess I have, um, I think I've kind of developed skills over the years uh, to, to, to observe myself. So I'm not saying I always do that, okay? I can be very reactionary, but I try as much as I can to observe my reactions, particularly when something comes my way that, you know, that is volatile or, or difficult for me to deal with. I then try as much as I can um, to approach it with, with intention, with, with, uh, with an open stance so that I can react within that window of tolerance where I possibly conduct myself the best in the best possible way in putting the most potential forward. Um, I'm not saying that always happens. You know, at times, obviously, I react um, without it going through any kind of um, cerebral processes. Um, but but yeah. Like, that sounds like mindfulness, Ben. Yeah. So actually sitting with the uncomfortable feelings, again, this is something that yeah. I have to do. And as, as you say, I don't always do it. I don't always yeah. manage up and think oh what's going on yeah but but that mindfulness is is that that is that's the way forward that's the way to bring our brain back online yeah you know i remember seeing um it was a uh, it was uh, a group workshop uh, i was part of and one of the ladies had a had a um panic attack so the right. presenter wonderfully dealt with it yeah you know said, what time is it she asked her what time it was and count the number of circles, pointed all the circles you can see in the room. Mm -hmm. And that just brought her back into to reality. And then she got her up walking and outside for some fresh air. And very quickly, she was back in her window of tolerance. Yeah. I mean, one of the other interviews I've done is gives quite a good overview on what mindfulness is. Um, but apart from mindfulness... Yeah. Can you think of any other category that would help us to stay within that middle window? Um, exercise. 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 You know, I, I would put, I would add meditation in the, in there as well. Meditation, yeah. prayer, um, and doing, you know, going to God, seeking comfort. Yeah. Him seeking His love. Yeah. Um, you know, having a cuddle from a friend um, mm. or a family member, uh, um, stroking the cat. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts of 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 ways of, um, you know, sometimes, you know, actually sitting and watching a, your favorite TV program. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, as long as it's not like a 10 hour binge or something yeah. like that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with sitting down watching a film or, or, or a program, um, you know, for a while. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I'm all for relaxing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's, uh, so there's, yeah, there's all sorts of exercise for me is a big one. Um, so it, for me, it's getting on my bike, getting out into fresh air, getting out into nature. Yeah. Uh, and that has a, has a soothing effect, getting out into the Downs banks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going yeah, for I, a friend. Yeah. I mean, th there are many activities that we can do that fall under that category of self-care, you, know, you know, like exercise, mindfulness, um, praying, retreating, as in, having a, a day out, yeah. um, like you say, for visiting friends or maybe just having a good old glass of wine. Um, I, think we, I think we're possibly all aware generally of what we can do that relaxes us. I think we've got those immediate go-to places. So there are healthy choices we can make. And then there are obviously 
unhealthy unhealthy choices um which is the things that we don't want to do but we yeah. continue to do exactly yeah so what about when somebody notices that they go in the, into the blue or the red zone uh, they might not initially know that they're doing that okay they might not yeah you know we might not be aware it's only in hindsight and yeah. in retrospect that we go oh wow what what did i do there you know why was i immobile when that was happening in front of me or why was i hyperactive when that was happening what what would you encourage uh for somebody who finds themselves reflecting on their reactions um we can't just always assume oh it must be trauma or it might, you know what 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 advice could you give to somebody who does keep choosing something that they don't want to do or they they do it within the red and the blue zone um well as i said the good place to start is prayer mm. meditation all yeah. of that but sometimes we need a bit more help yeah you know we maybe need to talk to a friend uh, you know a supportive wise friend about it yeah. and sometimes just speaking it out and and having whatever it is whether it's shameful or, or or whatever speaking it out and having somebody to hear us and for them to be empathic towards us yeah you know that's the start so of, so so yeah. a big step initially is for that person to be incredibly brave and to yeah. say help i need some help i need help i this this three glasses of wine every night it's getting out of hand mm. it's too expensive uh, it's too expensive and i mm. feel rotten in the morning and i i can't you know i'm not able to to work effectively i don't like who i am when i'm like that yeah i don't i get angry when i yeah. when i drunk too much um yeah so we need to admit try and admit it and so it's about uh, honest it's about honesty again isn't it trying to be honest and then when you when you feel brave enough to be honest yeah going to somebody and say can you help me with this but man we can go into denial yeah and play all sorts of games with ourselves to deny the problem. Yeah. Um, you know, again, we're doing the thing that we don't want to do. Um, mm. um, so sometimes it takes us a while. Sometimes we've got to get to rock bottom mm. uh, before we admit the problem. Um, mm. um, but uh, yeah, you don't have to get to rock bottom. You can, you can be brave and say, right, I need to face this and and do something about it and um as it were fly into the darkness mm. if you want the sun to come up earlier earlier you don't fly in your plane into the sunset mm. you turn around mm. and you fly into the, the darkness fly into the black yeah. deal with it and the sun will come up earlier uh, earlier as you as you come through the blackness yeah so so obviously we're part of a church family and it's good for people to be in small groups, um, experiencing pastoral care in smaller numbers. How do you see this relating to what we possibly can find in small groups? Um, I'm not quite with you. Um... Well, when I'm thinking of somebody who is doing something that they don't want to do or they keep doing something where, where are you going to go um and i can imagine if you're in a small group you could possibly um bring that out find support share honestly get prayer um yeah yeah i mean if your your home group is a is a safe place that might be a, a, a a good place to start yeah um, i think sometimes sharing with a large group yeah uh, it, you know maybe not everybody's able to receive you um i talk about you know we talk we talk about casting our pearls before swine jesus yeah talked about that and i 
I like to think of our pearls as we've got white pearls, which might be our wisdom or, mm, or mm. little gems of information. Yeah. Um, and we can cast those before people and they can trample on them. Mm. Um, um, you know, or we have our black pearls and yeah. they're even more delicate. Yeah. Our black pearls are those really difficult things inside, those things that are really hard, shameful things that are really hard to talk about. And yeah. we've got to be careful who we um, uh, cast our black pearls before. And yeah. sometimes it needs to be a therapist. It could be your house group leader. It yeah. could be somebody else within your house group. But sometimes it, it, it just needs to be, a, a you know, a therapist yeah. um, or even a coach or something like that. Um, but somebody you trust that can hold your black pearls and not not trample on them. Yeah. I, the, the thing that I'm increasingly realizing is that we as people, we uh, find it so easily to convince ourselves that we're doing all right, that we're all right. And I guess when you're talking about a subject like this, you know, we can all relate to it, can't we? We can all relate to at times behaving in a way that we're not proud of, or we think we weren't our best. And you know, that's okay. You know, there's no, there's no shame in that. But I just think it, it is so good to try and be as honest as you can with one another, with your brothers and sisters, and sharing in, in how we are reacting to our everyday moment. A burden shared is sometimes a burden halved. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've had things that I had denied mm. to myself for donkey's years. Mm. Things I just, you know, I, I denied to the point where they didn't exist. It was not real. It was not true. Mm. And uh, eventually, um, you know, I've seen a therapist. Yeah. And eventually, I had to face some really tough truths. Yeah. And um, in doing so, um, brought freedom. Mm. Um, uh, not automatic, not sudden, it's not like that. But over a period of time, you know, and it, it's still happening, freedom is more freedom is coming day by day mm. as a result of admitting. Yeah those things yeah. admitting what happened yeah um, um yeah better out than in yeah anyway let's let's draw this conversation to a close i mean i'm very aware that you know we could talk for hours about a subject like this oh there's, there's uh, so much more <laughs> yeah but why don't we um why don't we really pray for a moment why don't you pray for us Sean about just people who who are struggling just to kind of regulate their their reactions to whatever situation they find themselves in okay Lord thank you for Rising Brook Church and for everybody in it Lord uh, the people that go the people that listen on um uh, online uh, obviously at the moment um and the leaders lord who work really hard and lord yeah we're all facing uh difficulties but some far more than others and lord some of some people some of us are not so able to regulate ourselves so i pray for all of those those people lord that they will see what they're doing they'll understand what they're doing and that lord they will have self-compassion for what they're doing that they will rather than shame and fear and self-loathing and disgust that they will have self-compassion for there's a reason for what they do and lord you have compassion you are a god of compassion lord 
help us all to understand those buttons in us that can get so easily pressed and send us uh, out of our window of tolerance. Mm. Mm. Lord, help us to admit the, the, the issues that we have. Help us to be really honest with ourselves and other, pe mm. and other people mm. and seek help. Seek mm. help. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been fantastic talking to you, Sean. And um, I'm you sure too. there was lot yeah, I'm sure there was lots there that there's good food for thought and um, and hopefully will help people walk better. I hope so. So talk to you soon, Sean. Talk to you soon, Ben.